Hey guys, welcome to the video where we'll be talking about peptide bond formation. If you guys have not checked out the last video, go ahead and please check that out. Uh, I talk about proteins and the basic overview of proteins. But in this video, we're going to go more into kind of the peptide bond formation through dehydration reactions, hydrolysis, and many more. So what I want to start with actually is a quick recap. In the last video, I had a photo, if I could pull it up right here. Boom, perfect, perfect, perfect. What we had is, um, you know, the, the makeup of an amino acid. And amino acids are what make up proteins, right? So let me go ahead and get my pen out. And I just want to do a quick overview of an amino acid, which has an amine group, has an alpha carbon, a carboxylic acid, which I classify as Ku, and I made a little joke um, of ways to remember Ku, kind of like Aku from Samurai Jack. And, I mean, <laughs> I know it's pretty lame, but if it works for you, it works for you. It definitely worked for me. Um, and then we have an R group, and that's just a, you know, just kind of a shorthand in chemistry saying that this alpha carbon has this R group attached to it. The R group can be anything. And the different 20 amino acids that we have do have different R groups. And that's a good way to kind of uh, distinguish, you know, what amino acid it is. Because all the amino acids will have an amino group, the amine, an alpha carbon, and a carboxylic acid. So that's just kind of an easy way, again, for us to distinguish what amino acid is by its R group. Now, when we want to attach these amino acids, we do it by a peptide bond. Peptide bonds are these covalent bonds that link the amino acids together. So I'm just gonna skip ahead just a bit. Um, we have this whole reaction that I have written right here. If we just skip over to the product, which is D and C, we see that there is a water and then this right here is considered the peptide bond. All right, so let me just go back a bit so you guys can understand kind of what's going on here. So let's start off with A. We have an amino acid here. So this is the first amino acid. Actually, let me change the color for you guys. We have an amino acid here and then we have the second amino acid here, which is B. And in the reaction, we see this arrow here. We form this dipeptide is what it's called, dipeptide. So this is the linking between two amino acids, right? Amino acids. So again, we can see here, this is the peptide bond formed, and this is our whole amino acid here, okay? And then also over at D, we get this water here. So let me kind of just clean this up a bit so I could go more into what this reaction would be called. This reaction is also called a dehydration reaction. Can you guys guess why it's called a dehydration reaction? This is called a dehydration reaction because of the loss of water. Now, there's also another way of calling this. It's interchangeable, but also it's called a condensation reaction. And you'll hear chemists or people like me, um, you know, interchange these two terms. And they mean the same thing for this whole peptide bond formation. It can be a dehydration reaction or a condensation reaction because we're losing this water as a result and forming this peptide bond. Okay. So now let me go into the next thing. I kind of want to talk about these arrows because one may ask, okay, I see these arrows. One is smaller than the other one is bigger than the other and no it's not like a lifting contest which one is bigger or not actually what's going on here is because this reaction is reversible anytime you see two arrows in chemistry um, we know that a reaction is reversible however this smaller one and this bigger one means that the products is less favorable in the reaction and the reactants are more favorable so let me draw out this here. So again, we have this arrow here. The smaller one means A and B. A, B are more favorable than 
C, and D. Now, the question is, why is it that A and B is more favorable in the reaction? Well, in this reaction, this reaction requires energy. So to go from to go from the products, oh my God, what's going on here? To go from A and B to C, well, C and D, it requires energy. Um, the thing about a lot of these chemical reactions is, you know, using energy is not favorable. Who wants to use energy, right? Like, oh my God, I have to create this. That's kind of how I think about it, you know? Oh, I have to create this product. It's not favorable. However, C and D going back to the reactants is favorable. And why is it favorable? Because these reactions actually are catalyzed by something called proteases. So proteases are enzymes that actually break the bonds of peptide bonds. So not only can peptide bonds form, but they can also be broken. Now I want to go a little bit into uh, energetics into the next slide. So it can kind of give you an idea of why, you know, uh, one is favored over the other. So here we have A and B, which is our reactants, and we have our products. And we have something called EA. EA is the activation energy. Activation energy. And we can see that C and D is at a higher energy state than A and B. It takes way more energy to get to C and D than it does for A and B. It requires so much energy. So therefore, to get to C and D, again, which would be the um, peptide bond, I'm just put peptide bond formation, PBF, and the water, is energetically unfavorable because it requires so much energy. Now going to A and B requires less energy, therefore it is energetically favorable. And when this peptide bond is broken, the word for this is called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. And this is catalyzed by proteases. And the thing about proteases are that when we learn later more about enzymes, enzymes lower this activation energy required to form the reactants. So now, again, why is it un, um, energetically favorable? Because we have the help and we have the assistance of an enzyme. So when these products are like, oh man, I have to, you know, go ahead and break this bond. But hey, oh shoot, we have protease available. We don't have to do much work because it's lowering the activation energy for us. So that is highly favorable. As to where when you're forming a bond, the chemical reaction is like, oh, so much energy to go ahead and make these, uh, these products. So this is what we have going on here by this chart. Um, you see the energy here and then the reaction progression, okay? So I wanna just go back a bit now that we got some of the energetics out of the way, and I want to get back to the reaction and kind of more of the mechanism for it, we go here. So what we have again is, ooh, let me pull out my pen. What we have is this nitrogen. Oh my God, what's going on? This is so embarrassing. <laughs> okay, there it goes. So what we have is the nitrogen. So again, these are two different um, amino acids. There's the R group, so we're not specifying what amino acid it is um, based off of the R group, but it is an amino acid. So what happens is this nitrogen goes ahead and attacks this carbon of the carboxylic acid. And then what we have is the electrons get pulled up to the oxygen, and then we have this form. Oh man, let me go ahead and erase this. This was left over from something else. What we have is this here. We have a peptide bond formation. And H. Ooh, that was pretty cool. R. 
oxygen, hydrogen. So we have this right here. So this is our peptide bond that is formed. I'm sorry, our, um, our dipeptide that's formed. And then we have the peptide bond right there. And um, why I wanted to go back for this is uh, because I want to explain what type of reaction this is. So let me not try to get too ahead. Let me, you know, kind of backpedal. We have peptide bond formation. When the peptide bond forms and water is lost, that is called dehydration reaction, right? So what happened here was a dehydration reaction, right? Now, also, it can be called a condensation reaction. Also, <laughs> I know it's a lot. The third thing that I want to say it is, is it is called a, this is a mouthful, a nucleo Philic addition elimination reaction. Yes, so we have a dehydration reaction, or it can be called a condensation reaction, and it is a nucleophilic elimination reaction because we have this nitrogen going for that carbon of the carboxylic acid. It's adding itself right in the middle and substituting one oxygen and the two hydrogens, which form the release of the water. So this is an overview of the peptide bond formation. Um, just real quick, I guess I'll just go over again uh just briefly of what went on here i actually want to kind of go back to the energetics side of things because remember um we do have where we can do this right here and then this small arrow here where again the reactants are way more favorable in the reaction than actually forming the peptide bonds because again we must use ATP and the chemical reaction is just like wow we have to use energy as for breaking that peptide bond using a protease right it's like oh we have to break these bonds but we have protease so we don't have to do much work it's going to lower the activation energy and we're able to do this reaction without much energy because the activation energy is lowered so i hope that gives you a good brief um idea of peptide bond formation uh the type of reactions involved and how a dipeptide is formed so i'll see you guys next video if you have any questions just let me know down below okay all right guys peace